Hi, you're on the Bible Forum. I'm Warren Sprouse. We do this every Sunday night. I want to tell you something that's new. I'll remind you again that there are too many segments of this show to fit in the Ustream.tv place where you put them in the, the carousel. Used to be able to put as many as you want. A new company has taken over. I can only do, I think, six or seven. Tonight, I've got nine segments. So I'm encouraging you to check out Facebook, check out YouTube, uh, check out um, sermonaudio.com. They'll all be there. But Ustream.tv will only let me put up five or six. You remember the guy who the police shot in Wisconsin? You saw you know, the pictures. You saw the guy. He walked around to the front, of, opened the car to get into his car. He turned around. The sh cop just shot him. We saw it on television. The man had been tased <clears throat> twice, ignored the pain, didn't affect him, walked briskly away from the police officers trying to get into his car. The car, we found out later, had two children in it. A scuffle behind that open car door concluding with the officer shooting the man. The man's name is Jacob Blake, several times. It looked for all the world like police overkill. Pardon the phrase. A lawyer for the Wisconsin police officer who shot Jacob Blake is now saying that in the chaotic moments before the shooting, Kenosha Police Department officer Rustin Shesky believed he was intervening in an attempted kidnapping. He's got my kid. He's got my keys, the officer heard the woman yell, according to attorney Brendan Matthews, who is representing Shesky. Matthews told CNN that he that had Shesky let Blake drive off with the child in the back seat under those circumstances, the question would have been, why didn't you do something? Shesky's been placed on administrative leave while the Wisconsin Department of Justice reviews the shooting. No charges against Shesky have yet been filed. The initial video of the encounter does not show everything because the driver's side door of the SUV that this guy was trying to get into masked the details. The second officer at the scene corroborated the scenario. That officer did not fire because he did not have a clear angle at which to do so. The implication is he wanted to. So what happened? Well, the police were summoned in response to what was labeled family trouble. The woman who called police said Blake took her keys, presumably the keys to the car, and would not return them. Chesky saw Blake put one child in the vehicle but did not know others were already inside. A video of the scene showed officers wrestling with Blake on the passenger side of the vehicle before he shrugged them off and circled around the front of the car. A Kenosha Police Union statement has said the police used a taser on Blake twice without effect. You ever been tased? Normal people don't shrug stuff like that off. In the car, unknown to the officer, was a knife. Blake apparently retrieved the knife and turned toward the officer. After Blake refused off orders to drop the knife, the officer fired. Chesky ceased firing once he believed Blake no longer posed an imminent threat, according to his attorney. Matthew said he was speaking to rebut the incomplete, inaccurate, inaccurate narrative that portrays Blake as an unarmed man claiming he was not a threat to police. He added that the Wisconsin Department of Justice has said Blake admitted he had a knife in his possession. His family has insisted Blake was unarmed at the time of the shooting. Matthew said police provided first aid to Blake. Contrary to published reports, he said they found no wounds in Blake's back. Instead, Matthew said they found wounds to Blake's arms, side, and abdomen. We're getting to the place where we cannot trust anything we see or hear completely. 